Hi, in this video I'm looking at this problem here where we've got pairs of particles moving given by their vector functions, vector equations, and we want to know if they collide. And if they collide, identify where and when do they collide. So collision and path crossing is a little bit different. So if we were just asking if the paths cross, well, we could have one particle doing this and another particle doing that, and their paths might cross, but they might not cross at the same time. This particle might have started here and be moving up here and might be sitting there at a certain given time, but at that same time, this particle is moving a lot slower. It started here, moved down here, and is sitting at that crossing point, but this particle has already passed it, so they haven't necessarily collided. What we need for a collision is for the x, y, and z coordinate of the crossing point to be the same at the same time. We need the times to be the same. So if I'm going to apply that knowledge to part A of this problem, so if we look at part A, I've got these two vector equations, and I want the x's from equation 1 to be the same as x is from equation 2 at the same time. And I want the same for the y's. I want to see if the y's for equation 1 equal the y's for equation 2 at the same time as it did for the x's. And the same for the z's. I want to see if z equals z for the two equations, but with the same time as the others. So basically, I want to equate the x components, equate the y components, equate the z components, solve those individual equations for the times where the x, y, and z coordinates lined up, and then see if there's any corresponding times that line up across all three. So let's actually go and do that for my first problem. So for my first problem, my x in my first equation is 6t, and I want to see if that matches the x in my second equation, which is 2t plus 20. So then if I subtract 2t from both sides, I'm going to have 4t equals 20, divide both sides by 4, I get t equals 5. So this means that at t equals 5, I'm going to assume seconds, the x-coordinates were the same. And I want to see if we get the same result out of the y's, because we also need the y's to be exactly the same at 5 seconds as well for these to end up colliding. So if we have a look at the y's, the y in my first equation is 3t minus 1, and I want to see if that matches the y in my second equation, which is 5t minus 9. And so then if I subtract 3t from both sides, I'm going to have 2t minus 9 equals negative 1. Add 9 to both sides, I'm going to have 8 equals 2t, divide both sides by 2, and I get t equals 4. So the y's are the same at 4 seconds, but the x's are the same at 5 seconds. These two solutions do not match. And because they do not match, that means that the two vectors, the two particles, v and w, do not collide. Their particles may cross, we haven't proved that one way or the other, but they don't collide, they don't cross at the same time. The x's were the same at 5 seconds, or when t equals 5, and the y's were the same at 4 seconds, or when t equals 4. We could go further and check the z's, but if you go through the calculations, you get the fact that the z's are the same at t equals 6, and that's different again. So the coordinates are never the same at the same time. We need the x's, the y's, and the z's to be the same at the same time. So let's go and have a look at my part b. So for part b, if I'm going to do this same process, I've only got the two coordinates. So let's have a look at what we get. So if I equate the x's, I've got 3t plus 2 equals t plus 10. So that's me equating the x's. And so now I've got, if I minus t from both sides, I'm going to get 2t and subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to get 2t equals 8. Divide both sides by 2, I get t equals 4. 
do the same for my y's. So I've got 7t minus 3 in my first equation, and I want to see if that's the same as t squared plus 9 in my second equation. Well, that's going to give us a quadratic to deal with, so let's get everything all onto one side. So we'll have 0 equals t squared minus 7t from both sides, we'll have minus 7t. Add 3 to both sides and we'll have plus 12. We'll then solve that through either factorizing or quadratic equation or putting it into a calculator. And we get that t equals 3 or that t equals 4. So we end up with these two solutions. Now, the t equals 3 doesn't really concern us because that didn't turn up my first, but these two are the same. We end up with the same time where x and y are the same. So that means that the particles collide at t equals 4 because they had the same x and y coordinates at the same time. I found when did they have the, same, have the same x, I found when they had the same y, and they both had those at the same time of t equals 4. So we've identified the when, now we just need to do the where. Now the where is simple, because all we have to do is to substitute t equals 4 into the equation. So if I just pick on one of them, so if I pick on my first one, a of t, because this one was called a, and I substitute in, well, I'm now not trying to find a of t, I'm trying to find a of 4. Substituting in, I'm going to have 3 times by 4 plus 2i plus 7 times by 4 minus 3j. And if we work this out, then we're going to have 12 plus 2 is 14i, and 7 times 4 is going to be 28 minus 3 is 25j. So that means that they collide at x equals 14 and y equals 25. And we could confirm that also by substituting t equals 4 into my second vector and seeing what I get but I do get 14i and 25j. So if we're trying to determine if particles collide, we want to determine when are the x's, the y's, and the z's the same, and then see if they end up with the same times. If they do not, then they don't collide. If they do have a matching time, then they do collide, and we can substitute into one, and we should do both or more equations to confirm, and that tells us the where they collide. 